Here's the Earth, protecting itself from the harmful radiation of the Sun. And here's the Sun, protecting all of us from the cosmic radiation. Please subscribe to our channel if you like the content and you want to help us make these videos even better. Let's begin our exploration at the heart of the bubble. At the very core, we have our Sun, the master architect of this cosmic shield we call the heliosphere. But what is the heliosphere? Imagine the Sun not just as a celestial body providing light and warmth, but a prolific factory constantly producing solar wind, a stream of charged particles that it catapults out into space. As these particles journey away from the Sun, they form a magnetic bubble around our solar system, creating the heliosphere. As these solar winds rush out into space, they eventually slow down, colliding with the interstellar medium, a soup of particles and radiation that exists between the stars. To grasp the sheer scale of the heliosphere, consider this. Voyager 1, one of the fastest human-made objects traveling at a speed of about 38,000 miles per hour, took over 35 years to reach the edge of the heliosphere. To truly comprehend the heliosphere's protective role, let's visualize cosmic rays, a continuous stream of high-energy particles bombarding our solar system from all directions in space. These particles are born from violent celestial events like supernovas or black hole eruptions capable of accelerating them to speeds close to the speed of light. When these high-speed, high-energy particles approach our solar system, they meet the heliosphere. This magnetic bubble created by the Sun serves as a formidable cosmic shield. Its magnetic fields deflect or slow down these particles, drastically reducing the amount of cosmic radiation that reaches the inner solar system. This ensures our planets, especially Earth, are spared from these destructive particles that could potentially interfere with our electronics, or worse, damage living organisms by affecting their cellular structures. The creation of the heliosphere is a testament to the Sun's influence beyond just light and heat. The story begins in the Sun's scorching outer layer, the corona, where temperatures exceed a million degrees. In this extreme environment, particles move so fast they escape the Sun's gravitational pull, racing away into space at speeds of up to 500 miles per second. These particles are charged, electrons and protons, and together they form what we call the solar wind. The solar wind, laden with the Sun's magnetic field, expands in all directions, creating a magnetic bubble around the solar system. But here's a cosmic conundrum. The Sun's behavior changes over an 11-year cycle known as the solar cycle, marked by periods of intense activity, or solar maximum, and periods of low activity, or solar minimum. During solar minimum, the solar winds slow down, and the heliosphere weakens, allowing more cosmic rays to penetrate. As the solar wind travels farther from the Sun, it starts to lose steam, eventually coming into contact with the interstellar medium, the material between star systems. The point where the outward pressure of the solar wind balances with the pressure of the incoming interstellar medium is the edge of the heliosphere, the heliopause. Beyond this, our solar wind does not venture. Interestingly, the shape of the heliosphere isn't a perfect sphere, but more like a comet, with a round nose and a long trailing tail due to the motion of our solar system through the Milky Way. The Voyager spacecraft have been instrumental in our understanding of the heliosphere. Launched in 1977, the Voyager 1 and Voyager 2 probes were initially intended to study Jupiter and Saturn, but they continued their journey, becoming our first interstellar emissaries. In August 2012, Voyager 1 made a historic entry into interstellar space, becoming the first human-made object to exit the heliosphere. It found that heliopause, the boundary of our sun's influence, is not a hard, abrupt barrier. Instead, the solar wind slows down significantly and even turns a corner, blowing back down the tail of the heliosphere. Voyager 1 instruments detected a threefold increase in the intensity of cosmic rays as it exited the heliosphere, confirming our understanding that the heliosphere does indeed shield us from these high-energy particles. 
In addition, Voyager 1 found a magnetic highway, officially known as the Heliosheath Depletion Region, where the magnetic field of the Sun connects with the magnetic field of interstellar space, allowing particles from inside the heliosphere to escape out and particles from interstellar space to flow in. Now you're probably asking, what does this even mean? Is this going to hurt us? It's important to understand that space is incredibly vast, and the density of these particles is extremely low. Therefore, even with this gateway, the amount of additional cosmic rays entering our solar system is still minor compared to the cosmic rays the heliosphere already deflects. There's an increase in cosmic rays near this magnetic highway, but the increase isn't dramatic enough to pose a direct threat to life on Earth. Our planet's magnetic field and atmosphere provide an additional layer of protection, shielding us from most of the cosmic rays that make it past the heliosphere. While it's not dangerous for life on Earth, the increase in cosmic radiation could pose challenges for astronauts on deep space missions or for electronics on spacecraft. This is one of the reasons why understanding the heliosphere, its boundaries, and interactions with the interstellar medium is critical as we plan future manned missions to Mars and beyond. But back to the Voyagers. Six years after Voyager 1's entry into interstellar space, in November 2018, Voyager 2 also crossed the heliopause, but it made this crossing in a different location and at a different time in the solar cycle than its twin. Its data revealed fascinating differences at this other boundary of the heliosphere. For instance, Voyager 2 observed that the heliosphere's edge is not uniform, but changes over time and space, with the heliopause located about a billion miles closer to the region where Voyager 2 crossed. Furthermore, Voyager 2 detected a decrease rather than an increase in the magnetic field strength as it crossed the heliopause, contrary to predictions and the observations of Voyager 1. This suggests the heliosphere's magnetic field interacts with the interstellar medium in a more complex way than previously thought. Together, these Voyager's findings have greatly enhanced our understanding of the heliosphere and its interactions with interstellar space. They continue to send back data from the edge of the cosmos, teaching us more about our celestial home's protective shield. But our understanding of the heliosphere is limited by the few spacecraft that have ventured far enough to directly study it. We must solve this problem if we're to ensure the continued protection of our solar system and our technological society. Thankfully, we're not helpless. NASA and other space agencies are planning missions to study the heliosphere in detail. One such mission, the Interstellar Mapping and Acceleration Probe, or IMAP, set to launch in 2025 will collect detailed measurements of particles and magnetic fields to better understand the heliosphere's boundary. Further, advancements in computational models and simulations allow us to better predict the Sun's behavior and understand how changes in solar activity will affect the heliosphere's protective bubble. As we stand on the precipice of becoming an interstellar species, understanding and protecting our heliosphere has never been more urgent. The cosmos is a hostile place, filled with cosmic rays and interstellar radiation that our fragile bodies and sensitive electronic systems are ill-equipped to handle. Our heliosphere acts as a vital shield, but its strength is not constant. It ebbs and flows with the rhythm of our sun. Without a clear understanding of its behavior, any interstellar journey might be met with unexpected and potentially catastrophic radiation. And so we come to understand the vast, invisible bubble that cradles our existence, the heliosphere. As we look to the stars and plan our journey into the cosmos, we realize that understanding this protective shield is not just an act of curiosity, but a necessity for our survival. We are the children of the sun, sheltered by its winds, and as we step out from our home, we carry the hope that the same winds will protect us. Until then, we continue our study, our exploration, and our appreciation of the bubble that protects our solar system. Join us next time as we continue our journey into the cosmos, unraveling the mysteries that make us wonder and inspire us to explore. Don't forget to watch the video on the right and subscribe. Thanks for being part of Cosmonology.